Welcome to the App in Top mobile app marketing podcast. For so many mobile app developers, it's an all or nothing battle out there in the App Store. This App in Top podcast is your mobile app marketing advantage. Let's get that new app of yours moving to the top. This is the App in Top mobile app marketing podcast. And now your host, Michael Bauer. Hey, that's me. Welcome, welcome. This podcast is produced by AppInTop.com. You can find the daily blog now at blog.appintop.com. And as always, you can track us down on Facebook, facebook.com slash appintop. That's facebook.com slash appintop. And of course, on Twitter, at appintop underscore com. Appintop underscore com. If you're an app developer and you're trying to think about what your global planning situation is for your launch of your game, one of the things you should be thinking about is marketing your mobile app in China. That's where our guest comes in today. He is the CEO of iFree Asia. iFree Asia, a regional part of iFree Group of Companies iFree, i-free.com with offices in Beijing and Mumbai. His specialties include mobile value-added services, mobile content, games, video, music, and anything having to do with getting your mobile app development in China kicking off. Please welcome, we, we thankfully welcome, CEO of iFree Asia, Evgeny Kozolopov. Evgeny, how are you, sir? Hi, hi everybody. I uh, I wanted to uh, to see about about China in general, and from a guy who's there, who who gets the understanding of what's going on for China, there are more than one hundred app stores in China. I'm questioning: are is it is that that necessary? Are there such big players there? Why so many app stores in China? Hi, uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of um, interesting why there are so many uh, app stores in China, and basically the reason is that. Um, Google, like b- because the the Android is the main ecosystem now here in China. Okay. But, uh, but basically, uh, Android comes to China without Google Play um, for several reasons. Why? One of the reasons is that uh, Android Google Play is uh, still not fully open to China. Okay. Basically, basically the paid part is not open. And second, the local manufacturers, they prefer to install Android without Google Play. So in this situation, you have the huge mass of um, a user base without main app store, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, I mean, it, so, sound, it, it feels like it could be, as a user, you might be hamstrung as far as getting the apps that you want to get in, in that there's limited. So you have so many of these other app stores out there, which from a developer's standpoint, talk to me about it from a developer's standpoint. Say I want to enter the Chinese market and there's hundreds of app stores. Do I need to port my app to all of them or, or are there specific ones you would suggest working with? Uh, the, the thing is what you call port, uh, because usually by porting we understand to change something into the game uh, to to fit certain environment. Okay. But in case of uh, in case of app stores, you don't need to port to change the game. You basically need to distribute the game on the different app stores, and um, so you don't need to adapt the game to each okay. app store. Um, of course, there are like there are, there are different strategies for single player games and the uh, multiplayer games because there are different requirements from the app store but let's speak about the single player game in single player games uh, you don't need to change the game for each app store you basically uh, implement the uh, billing to the game which is usually the operator based billing through premium sms and then you distribute it to all app stores okay so yeah, so then it's up to you as a developer. Would you like to focus on one or two app stores, or would you like to 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 place your game on all of them? Uh, maybe you would have like special relationships with some app store. Maybe like you have preferential launch, let's say months ahead or two weeks ahead for one or two app stores, and then give it to the rest, or you simply do it to all app stores in the same time. 
What is your is your advice? Is there like a specialty uh, app store that a you know like for gamers, for instance, uh, is there a specialty one that is better for that? Is there a specialty one that perhaps uh, restrictions, legal issues aren't such a big thing when it comes to the games, or is it really just get it out there and get as much exposure as you can with every store? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, well, from the point of view of the end user, there are no difference between app stores. Okay. Absolutely no difference. Uh, all app stores have the game section. The all app stores have the app sections, and all app stores in the game section all all have usual categories like uh, shooters, whatever, like even more geo, or like any, any any typical game category. Sure. So, uh, from the point of view of developer, then it also doesn't make a difference which app store to distribute. We are talking with the uh, CEO of iFree Asia, who's joining us here on the App and Top Mobile App Marketing Podcast, Evgeny Kosolopov. Now, with that said, let's talk about moderation. Are, are there are there age limitations in place? Uh, is gambling okay? Is there? Let's look at it this way: anything that a developer would need to know about something being illegal for their apps in China. Uh, to put it simply, I would uh, I would say it like this. Um, you you have all typical limitations you would have in any other countries in terms of age or um, what else, like all, all other normal limitations. And then, plus on top of that, you would have several specific China limitations. And specific China limitations are, of course, no gambling, zero okay. gambling. Zero gambling it's altogether, okay. Yeah, zero tolerance. Zero, zero, tolerance. zero tolerance for gambling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, uh, of course, you wouldn't like probably to play with politics. If you have a game which is based on some political issues, it wouldn't be accepted as well. Okay. Yeah, and except that, not much than different from other territories. All right. So stay away from gambling. Stay away from politics. Everything else seems to be pretty much the norm out there. Is there either a market for or a concern in China in regards to games that would contain sex or violence? Does that become an issue? Uh, yes. Yeah. But uh, in terms of, let's say, sex is um, more or less like, I would say, standard European standard or yes. <laughs> maybe American standard. You, 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 you cannot do like explicit uh, sex or, for example, porn is not, of course, allowed here. Uh, the violence is is the same. It's like you have shooting games, you have uh, all this type of fighting games. It's it's okay, but if you would have like violence, like real violence, I don't know, like like a grand like Grand terrorism. Theft Auto, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, GTA probably style of games wouldn't go well here. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Understood. Understood. W- with that said, from your standpoint, there, what what kind of apps stand high chances of success in China? Is there anything that you're seeing at this point, either trending or that you see do very well in China? Um, China has um, China has uh, traditional love to all the arcade type of games, uh, casual type of games, because uh, well, it's it's the same as well as in everywhere in the world. Like people like to spend their time while they're in the subway. On the way to commute to home, they would like to play like very easy playing games. Sure. Uh, and uh, of course, there is hardcore audience for MMORPG games, which is different type of games where you like game session would be not just like five minutes, but maybe like half an hour. Okay. But it's it, it's it's different type of audience, and you should really find this audience. And in terms of um, like casual style of, style of games, uh, there are certain waves of popularity or how, how to say like fashional f- fashion so to speak for okay. example like this spring uh we could say this spring is the spring of runners all type of runners like runners temple run style of, yeah like temple style of runs runners for example uh, which uh, you have different variation of this like runner in the subway runner on right. the street car right, runner and so on right now for example the top grossing games like out of 10 would be like five would be runners interesting i Which, you know it's funny yeah. too because my my i have a seven-year-old daughter who loves her running game through the the trains and the subway and all of that kind of stuff in addition to she loves her temple run game so that kind of style seems to be hot right now 
right now yeah yeah and it will finish maybe in two months and then we'll have another fashion of wave like wave of fashion for another type of games gotcha yeah. now do you do does a developer again if i'm the developer that's just looking to get into china do i have to translate the app into mandarin chinese or can an english language app be successful in china of course it depends how heavy your game is based on the cultural context how much text you have in the game. For example, right now, one of the most popular game in China is 2048. You, you know this game, right? Like this yes. Puzzle game. Yes. You don't need to translate such type of games. Gotcha. <laughs> yes. That's universal. That's kind of a universal game. Yeah, yeah. This game, like, right now, like I see people play in English here, like if I just uh, o- overlook it in the subway or something like this. Uh, but um, all other games which you have text or when you have to explain to the user what to do, if you have any kind of tutorial inside of the game, even like two steps tutorial, then you you should do it in in Chinese for sure. Now, with that said, and thinking about things from the, the Chinese user's end, is there anything that a developer needs to know about the mentality of the Chinese users that might affect their success of their app in China? Oh, mentality, yeah. Um, one, one important thing is that um, cultural background and knowledge about the cultural background is very different in China. I would say it could be like called like a different planet, like Mars or Venus or whatever. Okay. Is that, what I want to say is that, for example, if your game is based on story which is related to, let's say, European, con- uh, European context, let's say, Vikings or like knights in the medieval age, mm-hmm. people, won't, people won't understand it here at all. Okay. Be, for, for, for them, it will be just random pictures of something like. <laughs> you know, yeah, I imagine this, if you had, you know, if there was, let's just as an example, like an American Civil War game, probably wouldn't go over that well there because of the cultural difference. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. If this type of game, you would, if you have, um, if you have time and budget to spend to a localized game, you probably could use the same game mechanic, but that you have to redo all art all the story um, to, to, to find some Chinese story which is suits you game. Here's what I want to do, Evgeny. When I, I want to take a quick break here. When we come back, I want to find out if you can tell me uh, an example. Give me an example of an unknown foreign app developer that made it big in China. And then maybe we can take a look at some of the, the mobile app marketing tools, tools that app developers need to, to use in order to help themselves in China. That's all coming up in seconds, right here on the App in Top mobile app marketing podcast. This podcast is produced with support from App in Top, an automated mobile app marketing platform in App Store and Google Play. This is the App in Top mobile app marketing podcast, and I am your host, Mike Bauer. How about marketing your mobile app into China? What do you need to know? Has there anybody who's done it successfully? Our guest knows. He is the CEO of iFree Asia. He is Evgeny Kosolopov. Evgeny, I left us with a question here. Wanted to see if you could come up with the name of a company, a foreign company, one that's unfamiliar in China, that still managed to hit it big in China. Well, honestly, I don't know this story. I'm based here in China last uh, four years, and I never heard of the uh, grassroots success story of foreign company in China. And the reason why, the reason why is that... Uh, uh, if you have the nice game, you might have some exposure to Chinese market uh, that's, what, that local markets will, like, let's say, directly will pirate your game. Okay. So then you, would, then, then you would have like local users. But do we call it success or not? It's, it's another story. Because yeah. you won't you, you won't generate any money from that. Yeah, so the, order, it's a, it's a, it's what you're defining as success at that point. So you're maybe you're breaking in, but it's not that you're necessarily having a huge volume of success financially. Exactly. 
And then if you really want to grab some part of Chinese pie in terms of uh, money, then you have to enter to China yourself to open the branch here. Okay. Or, or you have to find a local partner because uh, you cannot get the billing uh, if you are outside of China. As I said before, the main uh, type of billing for, for example, single player games is the operator billing through premium SMS. So you have to be connected to the operators and use their billing um, connectivity sure. to, to monetize your game. So we have examples of foreign companies do success in China, but all of these success stories are through the local partners. Evgeny, in regards to marketing, the, the, the tools that we have here in the U.S. and in Europe, the Facebooks, Google, mobile ad networks, offer walls, uh, they don't really have those in China to speak of. Where is a mobile app developer to, to be able to buy ads? Where, where should they go? Where do they look? Uh, well, um, you don't have Facebook, you don't have YouTube in China because they are blocked here. Mm -hmm. But anything you name, you have it in the U.S., you have it the local equivalent in China. For Facebook, you have equivalent like RenRen. For Twitter, you have equivalent Weibo. For YouTube, you have equivalent um, Yuko, Tudo, and so on. And for even for advertisement networks, uh, some of them are universal. Like, for example, Chartboost will work here at AdMob even would work here, InMobi would work here. But also, you have the local equivalents of all these um, advertisement networks. So if you are a foreign developer, you could probably uh, implement your usual tactics, uh, which you use um, in US, but through the local equivalents. Let's say, for example, if you have success through Facebook, uh, then you probably would like to explore how RenRen works here in China. Uh, of course, you would need to know the language, so probably you need to employ one or two people in your team who speak Chinese and can do it for you outside of China. Um, uh, and for ad advertisement networks, two strategies. One is to go through the international guys, like AdMob, InMob, Chartbus, or whatever. Um, and in addition to that, explore local solutions for advertisement. And, and so it certainly helps to have somebody in the market or somebody uh, close to you that can help out within the market there to help you with those things. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. PR campaign, getting a PR campaign pulled together. Uh, any suggestions for publications or where one should pu publish some app reviews? Uh, yeah, there are tons of bloggers, tons of the forums, review sites, um, the thing is that if you shoot them a message in English, uh, guys, we have the great game, have a look, you will have zero responses. Zero. So, yeah, because if, because all the local bloggers and reviewers, they uh, are native Chi uh, local native Chinese guys, and even though they personally might speak English if you meet them, but uh, to process incoming information in English, it's kind of like challenging. Um, so you, you first... If you want to have any kind of communication towards local media, you need at least Chinese-speaking person in your team. Okay, so that's a must-have. That's a definitive must-have if you want to have any modicum of success. Yes, it's, it's the minimum must. But if you want to have some, uh, um, some progress or some kind of success, then you need uh, probably a local person or a local team or local partner who personally knows uh, those people and knows who is who and like how to present the information to this or to that one. Again, I, I, I think it comes down to it's what it sounds like you're saying, sort of like you've got to have a personal relationship technically with somebody who's got uh, feet on the ground in China in order to really develop and see any kind of level of success happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you probably know it from the books that China is the land of relationships. It, it's everywhere. Yes. In business and With that, I'm, I'm yeah. curious. I'm curious too. Um, you know how we've got algorithms. How how much they they help get you to the top uh, when you when you've got high ratings and everything's working in the major app stores that way. Is something as simple uh, like in an app store the installs and reviews? Is the algorithm more complex like in Google Play? What are we talking about when it comes to algorithms and getting to the top? 
Oh, that's the dark side of the story. That's the dark. <laughs> this is where button up. This is where it starts to get tough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, one thing is you have uh, multiple app stores, uh, and even you, if even if you decide to focus on let's say ten of them, you still need to decide if you, for example, if you buy traffic or if you do some, you know, even if you do some PR and you give the link to your app uh, to your game. Which app store link would you give? Which mm -hmm. one of those then? So yeah. you have to decide. Uh, sec uh, yeah, second. So basically, you kind of like um, you, you split your traffic, first of all. So, yes. So the effectiveness is already much less than you would do it just simply on Google Play. Second, uh, each app store has their own algor algorithms, um, how they rank the games. Um, some of them do it based on downloads, some of them do it based on downloads and revenues, and some uh, some of them do it by reviews and so on. So it's it's very complicated, and each, each app store is unique. Is, uh, there is no si single answer. With that, and that's, uh, this brings up my next point, is is there, it, like you would, you'd mentioned earlier, WeChat, and, and, and that that's an important thing as far as uh, having the ability to, to create sort of the PR level and be able to market in the ways that we have Facebook and Google and stuff here. Um, is there a, an easier way to get them to feature your games? Is it as simple? And I, I say this meaning that we've already had this discussion about how it's all about relationships and having somebody who's got feet on the ground there in China. Is it as simple as having somebody there in China that can help you with that? How do you get WeChat to sort of feature your games? Well, um, if we are talking specifically about WeChat, right now there is no way to, no way. to do it, to, 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 to get featured from WeChat. Yeah, the, the reason why, because uh, WeChat is following the uh, the the story of Line and Kakao uh, in Korea and Japan. And basically what they do, they create their own game center. And the first games which are in this game center are their own for uh, last half a year. Right now they start to accept some external games, but one by one. And um, yeah, and then the, the, that's, um, that's another story how you get into the, the school. Right now they have not more than 10 games in there. So you can imagine, like, out of hundreds of games presented in, in China, only 10 games are, wow. are on their game center. So currently, there is no simple answer how to get there. And they, they don't give the answer. <laughs> there, it's, it sounds like there's no simple answer, and there's a lot of competition to get there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All the big brands are walking around Tencent. You, you know, when WeChat is the product of Tencent. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and um, everybody is talking to Tencent, okay, guys, please take our game and so on. And right now, it's it's really difficult. Wow. Well, you know what? It's as we talk to you about this, Evgeny, I kind of start to think. Well, as a developer who who may have you know a couple of connections here in the U.S. in regards to uh, people who uh, either are are fluent in Chinese or or may be from China or may make regular trips to China on on a certain level. Is there any? Is there an agency or or, or somebody that uh, developers can reach out to that would cover the full range of mobile app promotion in China? In other words, is there somebody that I could go to to reach out to towards helping me get that kind of thing done, or is it better done on an individual basis? Oh well, most of these success most of the success stories we know in China. For launching the foreign game here is through the local publisher. Okay. And usually the story is like you create the partnership with the local publisher and they do uh, everything from A to Z. It means uh, they do connectivity, they do local billing, they do local localization, they do adaptation, uh, they, ch they implement local SDK, they do PR, um, getting the traffic, everything you can think of as the normal job for the normal publisher. And with those uh, those those partnerships, um, are they how difficult are they to maintain with such a distance between, say, the U.S. and China? Are they difficult to maintain, or do these companies uh, sort of thrive on the ability to help uh, uh, foreign app developers get their product in? Yeah, of course, actually, because usually, usually the partnership is based on the revenue share. Uh, the more money publisher makes, uh, the more money developer makes. So both sides, developer and publisher, are interested to 
to promote the game and make more money. So, yeah, publisher is interested to kick the ass and go and do everything for the game. In terms of maintaining relationships, so, yeah, of course it's challenging. You know, like it's historically in the game industry, it's a love and hate story between developer and publisher, even like <laughs> for computer games. Right yes, now yes. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm curious about, let, let, we'll do this, we'll take a quick break here, Evgeny. I'm curious about um, being able to, and if it's possible to, for a, for a foreign app developer to get the Chinese audience to pay up. Can they make money, and how do you fight against the pirates? All of that, when we return, right here on the App and Top mobile app marketing podcast. This podcast is produced with support from App in Top, an automated mobile app marketing platform in App Store and Google Play. This is the App in Top mobile app marketing podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bauer. We would like to hear from you, so please send us your comments via Facebook at facebook.com slash appintop and also on Twitter at appintop underscore com. Appintop underscore com. How easy or difficult is it to get your mobile app into China? He is the CEO of iFree Asia. Evgeny Kozolopov. Okay, when you start to think about generating money and i think that most not only developers certainly users recognize this aspect of it but um according to my knowledge the only paying audience is that of the apple app store so how do you get a chinese audience to pay up and and start generating revenue for your app oh well uh let, 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 let's let's think about like the typical story of the app developer or the game developer Usually, when the uh, uh, the game developer doing the first game uh, to the market, to the global market, the maybe the main decision is to make the game first on Apple platform, or then on the Android platform, or first on Android and then on Apple. So basically, people start to think about these things first, not about China. They they might think about China, but let's say that okay, we will do it later. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a secondary or tertiary uh, thought, right? Yeah, and this is absolutely normal thinking, uh, except uh, when it comes down to this point when you realize that one third of your audience is already in China after you launch the game. Wow! So basically, what happens? Uh, what happens if you launch the game on the Google Play, and then um, you uh, so you, you launch your game on the Google Play, uh, and then. The game would be uh, immediately pirated to the um, local markets. So you will see you will see the downloads from China from your analytics. Let's say whatever you use, like Flurry or Google Analytics, you mm -hmm. will see the audience coming from China. But you cannot do anything with this audience because Google Play is not working here. So uh, this first money uh, seems like you have lost. And then you start to go to the local publisher and tell them, guys, there, I have a great game. Please help me to make money. And then the local publisher has to fight with the piracy. So if they take your game, um, they, they localize the game, which would take maybe from a few weeks to maybe even a few months. Okay. And you still and you still continue to lose the audience during that time. Sure. And then when you... When you, when you localize the game, you actually go to the market with the publisher. You start to get like first revenues, and in the same time, uh, we as the publisher have to fight with the piracy. So the ideal situation, for example, when we work with our partners, uh, w w with the developers, let's say maybe not startups, but with the people who we, which we knew already for years, mm -hmm. we tell them this, uh, guys, if you want to have success in China you have to do simultaneous launch in the global market and in China. So when you know that you will launch the game, let's say, next month, please give us the game. We will do localization. We will apply for the billing. And on the day when you launch it globally, we will launch it in China, so we'll have zero piracy. This is the ideal situation. Sure. 
And that that to me sounds like a fantastic deal. And and li- and I like the thinking there as well that that to not downplay China, to not think about it as a secondary or tertiary thought, but to think about it as a giant part of the global launch of whatever it is that you're designing. With with that, what business models yeah. are most profitable? Go ahead. What you're going to say, Evgeny? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to just make a quick remark on like why China couldn't be second. Um, uh, second thought, because you probably know already that in terms of downloads, China is already number one market in the in the world. Yeah. In terms of re- in, in terms of revenue, it's still behind the U.S. But I can tell you that uh, the top grossing games altogether can can really make one or two million U.S. dollars per month for one single game. Wow! So it's kind of good money. A, yeah, you should definitely not make it a secondary thought at that kind of dollar amount. Yevgeny Kasalapov, CEO of iFree Asia, joining us here on the uh, mobile app marketing in China. Now, w- with all of this said, curiosity that I've got here is what business models are most profitable when you're talking about your app? Is it an advertisement-based or, or freemium, free-to-play, paid? What are we talking about for the most profitable when it comes to the Chinese market? Well, the answer is simple, free-to-play, because you know this. basically this, this business model was invented in China, first of all. Or in Asia, so to speak, maybe in Korea, but more, more or less, it's Asian model uh, free to play. So you cannot uh, you cannot make uh, users uh, here to pay upfront to your uh, app or game. It's absolutely impossible. You cannot do premium model here. So it must be free to play. Um, if we are talking about advertisement, is still not well working in China as well as it would work in the US or in Europe because the advertisement. Mobile advertisement business here is still on the growth stage. Okay. So you, you can you can make some money, but it would be uh, it would be smallest part of your revenue of China. Now, um, thinking about monetization here and and money from a, from an app developer standpoint, you talk about making sure you get in with a local publisher. They take care of the piracy aspect of it. Uh, what is the revenue split when you're talking about the developer, the app store? the telecom company, and I guess you've got to throw in whatever you're doing on the local publishing front as well, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the, the revenue split usually, uh, what? Uh, well, it's not a secret, uh, so like everybody is talking about like 50-50 of the net revenue, mm-hmm. and uh, net revenue means that uh, after App Store, after the uh, billing solution, and then, uh, and then this part, actually, billing solution, actually varies uh, because uh, if you use the operator billing, like premium SMS, the operator would take even up to 45, 50% of the revenue, of the gross revenue. But for uh, MMOR RPG games, it's worst payment solution because <laughs> you have like, uh, you have the big part taken by the operator and you cannot make high level billing price point. Let's say you cannot make fifty dollars uh, virtual good there with the operator billing. So for this type of games, then you have to use the online ga- online payment solution, which is similar, as I said, like it's similar to PayPal, but it's local, like Alipay, ePay, TenPay, uh, and so on. And in this case, uh, it it works very similar to PayPal. You basically you should have your account, you have to top up your account somehow, and then. You play the game and you pay, and and you and in, in this case the the payment price point could be up to one hundred dollar, no problem. We are talking with Evgeny Kozlopov, the uh, the CEO of iFree Asia, who's giving us some insight on mobile app marketing in China. All right, I want you. We talked earlier about the current trend as far as the gaming and the running games are going. I, I'm going to I'm going to ask you to take a look into your crystal ball. Evgeny, I want you to look at that crystal ball that's sitting on top of your desk right there and tell me where you think the Chinese market is going and uh, uh, and what do you think is going to happen in the future of the Chinese market? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> Chinese market is very fashion driving and what oh, I would I would name it like this. And what I would say is that if we would have any big success globally, any new type of games which would make the new, like as you remember, there was Angry Birds. There were there were like Clash of Clans. Now Temple Run. It's yes. like waves. Yes. And China, China was uh, China was historically following this trend, like with 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 the lag of maybe one or two months, something like this. So if there will be global trend, uh, 
globally, then China will follow in terms of type of games. But there are also local specifics where, uh, uh, like, uh, like, like, like set second stream, I would say, where the local market is going to. And the local market is going towards the multiplayer games. Multiplayer games with the long uh, playing session, MMORPGs and like um, Quest and like all, everything you would play long time and where it was you would expect high retention rate yeah this what everybody loves okay so that that's going to continue to grow and then again taking a look at what's going on globally you know that at some point china is going to catch on with that yeah exactly okay and and I, I, last question i've got for you here um when you take a look at everything that we've talked about here from your standpoint, if you could give me three things that any developer would need to know before they even, as we talked earlier, you know, uh, when you're launching your app globally, you're thinking U.S., you're thinking Europe, and make sure you throw China into that. Don't make it a second thought. Don't make it a tertiary thought. Make it a part of, of your overall global launch. Um, give me three things that we've kind of talked about here and maybe even one thing we haven't had a chance to yet that you think it's important for any app developer to absolutely have knowledge of before they begin working in the Chinese market. Well, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, if you think about China as part of your global launch strategy, first uh, do pre-selection and talk with some local uh, companies here in China. Get their opinion, get their feedback, and maybe, maybe not strike a deal right away, but at least at least have someone uh, you probably would be closer to the signing deal if you are deciding to go to China. So you have to do some kind of like pre-work, like pre preparation work. Second uh, is that um, ch Chinese market, uh, in, in, in terms of technical things, is still kind of like catching up with the global level of mm -hmm. devices. And what I mean is that. You need to think about the game or uh, the, say, the launch package game, which is small. It must be like 20, 30, 50K maximum. Otherwise, if you have the like rich graphics game, uh, even like racing or running game, but mm -hmm. which is uh, heavy as like 200Ks, it will not go in China at all, really. So you have to optimize your package. And uh, second, or oh, third, from the technical point of view, yeah, think think ahead of localization because we still have cases when the um, uh, global developers they don't use Unicode on their games, and then when they comes to the even simple translation to Chinese, they just simply cannot use Chinese fonts there. So, which is you have to make the game again from scratch. So, think of localizations ahead. It's not only concerned to China, but also concerned like to whatever like French or Spanish. So you should have the global mindset from the very beginning. Yeah, and I think that that's probably the biggest key right there. The, the last thing that you said there, Evgeny, is have the global mindset from the very beginning. And that means thinking about not just what the development is that you're working on at this time or the graphic allo uh, allocations that you need to have for it, but think about where you're going, the size and the technology that's that, that may be a little bit behind the times in China. How are you going to compensate for that? And how are you going to make that happen across the entire globe? That that's going to at least start the process of some level of success for you when it comes time to breaking into the Chinese market. Evgeny, exactly. thank, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. I, I completely appreciate it. You gave us so much information. Uh, I think it was 100% fantastic, and I appreciate your time, sir. Well, it was a pleasure for me to be in touch with you, and yeah, hopefully it helped to somebody to make the next great story in China or globally. <laughs> I think it has. I think it will. And moreover, I'll even add this. I think to a certain extent, people who have tried and have been unsuccessful with their mobile app marketing in China, it gives you a lot to think about. It gives you information that you'll be able to take with you for the next app and the successes that you're going to have there within. Evgeny, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, sir. I greatly appreciate that time. And thank you guys all very much for listening. This has been the App in Top Mobile App Marketing Podcast. Bye. The App in Top Mobile App Marketing Podcast is produced by AppInTop.com. <laughs>